Fighting Spirit, default map. See? Well, they didn't off-race, so that's good. On the upper right, we have the white Protoss Dragon Nath. And on the bottom right, we have our Terran player from Norway, Madino. Undefeated Perfect. so far. Undefeated, that's true. That's true. But he's only played one match. Well, still undefeated. So will Dragon take this home? Or will Madino retain his title as the Viking God? We'll find out briefly. Has this match ever happened? Um, no, I don't think they play in a tournament before. Oh, that's cool. Or, or not that I can recall. Uh, like some people tell me our matches are interesting. And I think, okay, what does that mean? Like these guys have never played against each other or there's no record of them playing somewhere. I guess that that's what it probably means, right? Well, um, it, it isn't so common to have games like this uh, share on a stream. They are very rare, and if they play each other on ladder, they sometimes play with a Smurf ID. So you don't, oh, you, you right? don't know, yeah, if uh, who the other who the other player is. So that's, it's that's a big cool. difference between Korea. I'm sorry to cut you off, and foreigners, right? They're they're very much in the spotlight. And I know they're pros or whatever, but you think like foreign players, they're not used to being in the spotlight like that as much? Uh, no, I think uh, I, there, aren't, there aren't many tournaments nowadays. So I think any, is that right? any event is very good to, I don't know, to keep the, the spirit going on. Okay, I was under the impression there's all kinds of great tournaments and major show matches. So, I mean, it's kind of sad to hear, but I'm happy about that because we fill a gap. Um, anyways, back to the game, I guess. Of course, so we're seeing a very standard opening. Dragon will open uh, a little bit aggressive with the Salad before his Dragoon. This is uh, quite nice to harass. Uh, but on the other hand, Madino is going also the standard build, and he's going to close to close. Sorry, his his entry with a, a barrack and a factory. This uh, particular setup is pretty cool because the salot cannot walk through these two buildings, and a marine can. So, good point. Yeah, that that this is very smart from him, uh, and. And I believe this salad will make zero damage. So the other thing is, if Madino will play standard, he will make um, a command center. And since he built a wall in his base, I'm thinking that he will build a CC uh, on the on the top on his own base. He will not he will not do it. Uh, he will not uh, throw his CC on his natural expansion right away. So maybe he's trying to play in a mind game right now. Ooh. So see how he's going to get scouted. Oh, no, he's building a starboard. OK, that's really, really, really unusual. This build isn't very popular since you have uh, you have to make damage. If not, you will be uh, really left behind. Economy. And it's really close by his. Uh, I think Protoss had vision of it. Yeah. Let's so see. Maybe no, not. he's not. No, I don't think he can. He can scout it. So an SCB entered Dragon main base. So Madino got all the information he needed. And uh, the main thing he watched is that the uh, Dragon is throwing uh, a fast Nexus. So that will discard uh, any all-in order. Would it so, have it been smart for him to kill that SCV and then make a robo, or it didn't make a difference? Because the SCV saw the robotics facility. Well, he's thing. playing a very, very safe order where he uh, builds a fax expansion and now throws two gateways, I believe, and builds an observer. 
this build order is quite standard and very safe against any push. Yeah, you got it. He made two gateways. Yeah, Terrans attempt to make a six six thirty minute push with three tanks and and some vultures. So this build is for it's 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 really standard and can handle every type of aggression. So they he both will, understand their builds that they're doing right now. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, he will build probably he will build uh, on a starboard. Uh, sorry, so, um, wait a minute. So Taryn has made the command center. We got a drop ship out. I think he's going to wait for his fourth vulture, or he's just going to take off with three. And there he goes. Protoss does have a pylon the very end of his main so he's gonna get early vision of that but all of his units are a little ways well this build order usually tends to make on uh, up to seven dragoons to hold any kind of aggression mm. and then it throws uh if you don't see any rush yeah he oh, will throw a, a second gas and a simulator and a citadel Okay, so he just got two dragoons coming out. He he must see. I, I don't have any indication no. that he sees this right now. Marino is uh, is distracting dragon with a front attack, so he can very harass. Nice. Very smart of Marino. And he's already so got now, a few probes. Yeah. Ooh. So now this probe, this vultures will make a lot of damage. Oh my god! At least six, seven. Oh probes dead oh he was very yeah. lucky there but he received tons of damage yeah i, I can't over 10 probes my friends so that's really unfortunate uh, even though he made a lot of damage uh, take notice that the worker difference is only four so fair enough even though, even though he made he made a lot of damage he isn't so, so far behind. So whenever he he clears this vulture, they will be more or less the same. It was kind of fun watching that, though, man. It was a good frontal attack and back attack. Now, the probe almost saw that drop ship. And he had a pylon down there, too, but it must have missed his uh, eye. Yellow is kind of easy to spot on a minimap, too, right? Yeah, but if you click, uh, I believe it's shift and tab, you can change colors. Uh, he might have been playing with red, too. They're both kind yeah, of... Yeah, I, I, I tend to do that, always. So now Marinho is doing a, like a standard uh, follow-up with uh, Armory and uh, Academy, just to, to scout. And Dragon is macroing up. I think he's going for a gnarly bust since he think uh, the Terran is uh, low on units. So he will try to do a Bulldog attack with full Dragoons and a shuttle with uh, four Zealots, three Zealots in this, in this case. So let's see how this goes. Uh, unfortunately, Madinho doesn't have any turrets because he didn't build an engineering bay. So maybe this shuttle can make a lot of damage. Ooh. We see Madinho sneak vultures again. So this is starting oh, to get really annoying for the Protoss player. Yeah. Now we see over a 10 worker difference and Dragon economy is deeply hurt. So he would try to make a counter attack right now, but I don't know, I don't know if these units are enough. I don't know if they're enough. There are a lot of tanks, and a will, and a bunker will be right. So, and he backs off. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dragon is in a very bad spot right now. Madinha will drop again. Vultures, while he is researching plus one of attacks in the armory. It's interesting how he just does three and not four. Yeah, uh, Scan was once said that it's uh, more efficient. To just drop two two vultures except of four, because you'd only need two hits of vultures to to 
to right. get uh, to kill one one proof. So dropping four uh, is. I always figured more... mines would be more helpful since you'd have more of those, but that makes sense to me. Yeah, it's it's more about the late drops, right? Uh, like this uh, this kind now. Oh my God, is he of... coming back again? Yeah. He's trying to to distract the Protoss and try to not let him uh, stabilize and have his uh, usual build order. So far, he's doing a great job. In this time of the game, uh, if if the Protoss player isn't bothered at all, think that at 11 minutes he have like two two or three expansions and he will be maxed out at 11 minutes or 12 at most. So. The and time. he doesn't need to expand right now. You don't. You feel yeah. like he's even with Terran. He needs. He needs to expand. Those are a lot of tanks, but he has quite a few dragoons here, man. Well, I think. Um, I think Madin is trying to do like a timing push when his plus one is finished. So. Here's a dropship again. This is a short drop, I think. Yeah, I think he's trying to punish and to end the game right now. Um, I don't know if this is the wisest choice. I, w I maybe would go. I uh, would oh have for macro build. He's lucky he's got two dragoons there, but I I'm surprised he just left, man. Like, it wouldn't even drop this many times. Yeah. Well, he had to build cannons in between his worker line. Is that worth it, you think? Or is it better just to keep like a dragoon or two there? Uh, yeah, you have to be cannons. It's cannons a big investment, really... that's why I asked. It's yeah. a gateway, basically, that you could be making. Yeah, but uh, usually uh, the, the odd thing is that Protoss uh, would have needed to have one more expansion, but due to the mm -hmm. aggression of the veteran, uh, he sticks to two because he's expecting expecting a two base all in now. So now he's trying to build as much gates as he can and try to hold this timing attack. Madinia will not make another CC, at least not soon. So I think it would be a wise choice to make a CC and to play a macro game since uh, the protest economy is is right. very hard. Try to secure his uh, six o'clock, right? Yeah, but uh, I'm not seeing another CC. I'm not seeing a science. I think he's worried about moving out a little bit and sieging and slowly securing it because he could just. Well, I think I die. think he was going to for a timing attack, but uh, but. He saw dra that Dragon had a lot of units, so he he took he thought it again, and he and he throw another CC right now. But the bad thing is that is that his uh, upgrade timings are really messed up. He's starting plus one defense, and he just started his second armory. And the, the exact timing for the armories are when when the plus one is half the way done. You have to be throwing your your. I'm your surprised stuff. he's moving out like this. Like you're really vulnerable as Terran, right? Protoss, I think Protoss could have just rushed him there. He doesn't well, have that many tanks yeah. or units. He has tanks. The the odd thing is the, that he doesn't have any vulture to support the tanks. Right. Yeah. Marino, Marino cannot lose his tanks. The Protoss, the Protoss has to save his dragoons. And try to trade what cells. Again, was saying, yeah, tanks and dragoons. I guess you, tanks you don't... and dragoons are the the heart of his, their both army. You want to keep so, remaking vultures and zealots, huh? Exactly. If he lo he Terran cannot lose tanks. If he loses tanks, it's a good trade for the Protoss. Because they're very expensive and they take a while to make. Yeah, okay. it's very it's very hard to rebuild all your tank army. So without tanks, there is no push. So Marinho is in an awkward situation, uh, upgrade-wise, because um, I think he, in his head, he was hoping for uh, for another game, and now he's improvising a little bit. So now our friend Dragon has 
uh, already decked up. He has an arbiter, and he chosen the path of doing stasis, which is interesting. So Terran army, uh, Protoss can make trades with the uh, Terran army as long as his upgrades are not three to three attack to defend. Right. What's worrying me is Terran has two armories and he's upgrading out of both of them. Protoss just yeah, has one. Yeah, but board. they are very late. So it, it will be a long time before he can reach three to upgrades. So uh, Protoss is not upgrading at all, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah, but he, he only needs Stasis and Arbiter. So... Madinho macro is Madinho, you know, dragon macro is uh, is not good right now. He Everything has... changed right now, man. For me, it feels like Madinho really has a sizable army right now. Well, he built a uh, he built a lot of tanks, and now he has uh, vultures to back those tanks. So now dragon is a very bad spot. He needs to to throw very good stasis, but most of the tanks are separated. Uh, I don't think he can trade now. He maybe will protest. You buy time. Yeah, you need to trade well and buy time and go attack an expo or go the like. You you, you cannot clash with the Terran army when it's C shop because you will lose everything. And since uh, he has uh, less unit for... than Terran, yeah, but he will lose this battle. I think. Saran just have a lot. And All of his allies just died from the um, mines there. Yeah. Good status. But there are a lot of tanks. This Dragon is a problem Dragon. every Protoss player faces, right? Yeah. Yeah, Dragon Economy was very hard for the drops. It's like, even if you wait as Protoss, Terran just keeps getting more and more units and, you know, sets up in front of your base and you're dead. So you're like, you know, if I wait, I'll die. If I attack right now, I'll die. Well, the problem was the harass uh, that he received and he couldn't expand because of that. His expansion was very late, so he couldn't replenish his army like he normally would. So... This is very unfortunate for Dragon, I believe. Ooh. Uh, Madina did a great job. So he so what's what's the biggest me. piece of advice you would give Dragon here? Well, I cannot give advice to Dragon since he's a very, very good player. Well, I didn't mean it like that, but yeah. You're... <laughs> but uh, I believe uh, it was unfortunate uh, for all the harass he received. I, I think it's Madina didn't. Uh, wouldn't have uh, made that damage early on. I think uh, the up the outcome of the game was would be very different. You you it's think he should have expanded a little earlier and obviously not attacked. That well, time. he couldn't expand since he since he got a lot a lot of drop losses. So mm. uh, that was unfortunate. But Ino did very good. He was really smart. He disguised his dead. He. He did something that is is not normal. Not not all Terrans goes for a very for a very fast drop like that. So I don't know. He was smart. He he, he was well played. You cannot uh, you cannot tell nothing to any of these players. They play a good game and Madinho end up winning. So congrats for him. And we'll see if Dragon will will have his revenge right now. Okay, so round two of a show match between Dragon Medino. And the map. Match points. Dragon <laughs> picked it. Well, I saw a match here well, where a Dragon faced Koget, who is a very good Terran as well from Poland. And Dragon pulled an exceptional win in this map. So I'm really a fan of Dragon play. I really like his style. Even though I'm not a Protoss user, I, I really admire his play. So we'll see how this game develops.
So on the bottom left, we have um, our, our yellow Terran, Madino Rev. And on the upper right, we have our North American Protoss, the North American Hope Dragon Nas. So we'll see this game uh, if, they, if they decide to repeat real orders or if they will change. From the game uh, with Madinho and Grimeboss, I I can see that Madinho is a show that star a really star for play both both games. So maybe he's a Terran player who likes to harass a lot and make drops from scene. Right. So it's really fun to watch. This isn't a Terran map, you would say, huh? Mm, no, no, not exactly, because uh, the second expansion is uh, don't have gas. And the only expansion that have gas is really, really far away. Mm. So uh, th those refineries, those expansions are vital for, for the Terran. And the, and in terms and the of places where you could siege your tanks, you don't have any kind of advantage, right? Um, well, it's it, pretty good on this map as well. It's easy. It's easy to defend. Or not good. On it, it has a really open open areas in the middle, so those areas are really difficult to push because uh, uh, protos or Serg armies can flank very good at their own army. So. I don't know. I, I don't feel that this map is a Terran map. I think uh, Dragon is very comfortable playing this map. Uh, I remember his game versus Koget, and he showed really good uh, play. Koget is also a Terran who likes to harass a lot and play with Starport and with unusual unusual reloaders. So I think he's prepared for for it now. So, like game one, Dragon is opening with one uh, sellout before before the Dragoon, and let's see this. Madino make his his first factory in the this middle. This guy's of a the tricky player, isn't he? Well, I, I think he... Madino's a real pest, if I could use that word, because he, he yeah. really wants to give it to you in non-standard ways in some games I've seen. Well, this is interesting because I believe that since he cannot close the, the entry like game one, this setup could do a, a run by and scout that he doesn't have a factory in time. Mm. Maybe maybe the, this could fool a, a, a bad player or, or not experienced player, but I think Dragon will be that? able he will be he will notice that the factory is, is really late no slip ups with his zealot he's just been smoothly attacking marines at every chance i guess he sees that one factory do you think he's asking himself why does he only have one factory being made in a bunker and no cc his bank his uh, factory is very late so maybe with this bunker he can hold the attack, but uh, I don't know if this uh, will trigger some doubts in Dragon about his factory timing. Yeah, I feel like he doesn't know, man. If he did, he wouldn't be sending out his Dragoons, right? And here you have Vultures making and mine almost researched. Well, the bad thing of this map is the, that it has like very big uh, entrance, so it's right. really uh, hard to to stop uh, vultures from slipping in. So I don't know how Madinha will be able to stop these two dragoons because he doesn't have any tanks and guns with range uh, really uh, outrange the bunker, so. This bunker will die, so it all depends on these two vultures to make a, a, enough damage. 
And I guess the mines will protect them there, right? Here come the vultures. So it all depends if this can make enough damage. I'm I mean, guessing. He just walks past them. Mines around the gateway for any dragons coming out. And he's got another vulture harass harassing his expansion. Well, the safe thing to do in a standard reload is to send the first dragoon to attack, and the second needs to uh, be held back. So, having two dragoons on the on the attack wasn't the the safe option, the safest option, and now he's he's paying the consequences. Even if he had brought one more back, I'm not sure if it would have been enough to stop this. Yeah, this is a very good attack and a very good choice for this map. This map wow. is very wide. GG. Wow, I'm impressed. Really good game. And you know, he didn't make the factory and float it into his main. He just sort of decided to make it in the middle of the map. I guess that's a safer choice. Well, it's a smart choice. He was really smart. So, props to Nadine again. Or Takes the game in six minutes, man, against a really good player. Um, I think he would have got the best of anyone. The only the only thing you can be suspicious about was the factory timing, but uh, I don't know. It's really hard to tell. Well, this is no going to be one, an interesting third round. No one does. Those kind of villarders. I like this map because of the critters, the bears, as oh, uh, yeah. Banana likes to call or them. Salon. Yeah. Shiny white coats. All right, round three, man. Medhino versus Dragon. 2 0 for Medhino. Hopefully, not a shutout. For dragon. Hopefully we see. Um, I think Marinho knows if he lets a uh, dragon be, he will develop and become a, an unstoppable force. So that's why Marinho is trying to be as aggressive as he can to avoid uh, a macro game with dragon, which is smart. When you're facing a, a good opponent, uh, you don't want to leave him be because uh, right. they are very strong and they know how to handle themselves in the late game. And late game Protoss is really, is really annoying for Terran users. So. Mm -hmm. And the other way around as well, man. I'm well, just... it's pretty much... Uh, uh, I'm a Protoss player. I don't want. I don't want to say easier, but it's pretty, mechanically speaking, it's easier. Ted Parent just sits in its base and waits to get three three upgrades, and then just comes out and. Oh, you it. have to use. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You I have know. to use uh, your arbiter. It's it's you tough know. countering that. A lot of Protosses. I think many more Protosses died to that than uh, the other way around. Hmm. Well, I don't know. For me, it's really annoying to play Protoss in late game because the stasis, you make a mad movement and you and you get stasis all around. You see status more than carriers? Is that right? Yeah, because carriers you need you need to know how to how to micro them. How to throw all the interceptors. Yeah, keep the interceptors constantly out. They take a long time to make the carriers and the interceptors, like oh my god. But when you have more than six carriers it's very difficult. So it's a good choice, but you need to know how to micro them correctly. Arbiters, you have to stargate arbiters. You can stasis, you can recall. Recall is really a pain. Because you need at least three turrets to kill a arbiter in that spot and four turrets to avoid the arbiter making the recall. So, I see Artos just make a bunch of mines in his base all the time. Yeah, you have to. You have at, at four, uh, fourteen minute mark, 
uh, the Protoss is able to recall your base. Artos so is you cracking me up, you know? He complains yeah. about just spells that Protoss has. I mean, they're they're available, right? We we have to use them, but he, sometimes, I don't know if he's serious or not, but he, he sees them as like cheese or like amateurish or something. I'm just like, these. it's part of the game, man. They're, they're supposed to be used, right? Yeah. It's difficult to handle. All right. So we're seeing a pretty standard game. I think um, I think Dragon o opens uh, one side of every game. He didn't scout, so he's scouting his zealot, which is very odd. How do you feel about the making the zealot? Is that worth it, in your opinion? Yeah, because if he makes like. 15 cc or 12 cc you can get punished by that cello and it so, forces marines huh yeah um if you see an early cello as a terran you need to uh, delay your cc make more marines build a, a third supply depot before the cc it's a, a lot of changes for just one cello to handle so build a vulture. So I don't know. I think it's it's wise to make a, a salad. But he's really unlucky that he got like cross position. So Malino was able to handle that with ease. He will be able to retaliate the attack with a vulture. He probably expected it, that's why he made the bunk maybe and the Marines. Well, the bunker is really standard. For the dragons, right? Oh, saves his vulture. So now, dragon was smarter and play safer, and the second dragoon he kept it on his ramp. So about to avoid any scouting from the turn user. So watch this now. Dragon is making. DTs. This is interesting. Terran usually gets mines, though, right? That's the standard. Oh, no, no. He can make, like, if you want to play really safe, he can make, like, siege tanks and, and siege mode and an, an engineering bay. But. Uh... Would he do that? Because, I mean. Protoss isn't intending to attack with goons. In any event, what he's doing right now is a perfect counter to Dark Templar. So you think he suspected this, or he's just naturally putting down mines? No, I think he played almost the same versus um, Brianbot. He played very similar. So I think he throw um, a starport on the six-minute mark as well. So maybe he, this is his Malinio standard below them. Are the DTs really risky, or you could use them even if you're not able to penetrate Terrans? No, because you can you can like keep keep them outside Terrans base, and be really annoying because this DTs denies every a, any attack of the Terrans. They don't die, of course, with the mines. I they think he can. saw them with his vultures, and he suddenly started making turrets. Um, or maybe he just was going to make turrets anyways. But I, I think the DTs had passed the vultures, and he might have seen them. Oh, it's unlucky there. But they passed. Oh. He has a turret, so wonderfully handled. I think Madino counted the quantity of goons, and he knew that some cheesy build was coming up. I mean, that's a lot of minerals you're putting into three turrets in your base. You, you think that's worth it? Mm, only if you expect an all-in. But he saw that there was a, a nexus, so I believe that is too much. Maybe he expected a, a DT drop or something like that. Right. But now um, Dragon will go straight to Arbiter. Taking advantage of this uh, of this uh, build order tree, 
probably he would throw another expansion behind this as well. So no biggie for Protoss. This is not an all-in all Belordor because he expanded and he's able to throw Arbitrage right now that it's a, a mandatory unit for me in PvT. Making so, them this early with just one expansion, huh? Well, I think, I believe he needs to throw another one. But, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe he wants to play a two-ways arbiter. Karen nope. is starting to make more vultures. Um, is that usual, or do you want to make a bunch of tanks first and then start making your well, vultures? Uh, if you are Terran, you know that you only can produce tanks for from uh, one add-on if you want to uh, follow a path of upgrades. If you're if you're trying to hit a timing push like two one upgrades, you can only build tanks with only one add-on. But if you're going to make a five uh, factory push like this, you can you can you can have enough gas with one refinery. And you can have two add-ons. The only way uh, you can only pump pump tanks from one factory with add-on if is if you are expecting to um, to develop your your tech and to starport and to upgrade your units. If you are doing a timing attack, you can have two uh, two factory with add-on to pump tanks from those factories. Uh, but this is, again, this is a very all in build order. You know, I thought he saw Terran kind of head toward his way because he had two observers. But apparently not, right? He just kind of sat yeah. in his base and let Terran get really close to him. And this is not looking good for Protoss. Even though he no. has quite a few units here. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, like an all in build order and a timing attack. Uh, what would you do? Would you attack this or would you counter? I guess it only no, makes you, have, you have to you have to destroy this push. But uh, I don't think that I think he I needs a lot of speed and he needs more units. Dragon doesn't have many many units to to handle this. Got a shuttle. So he's waiting for his arbiter, but. He let him push a lot, so he already had towers. So it's a difficult spot now for Protoss. Uh, that's he's a very smart move. Unit. Yeah, it's very smart. Move this this is very annoying. Cutting the units in the middle is really annoying. So Terran cannot reinforce. And this is an all-in build order from, from Madino. If, if he loses this attack, uh, he will be far, far behind. Oh, that shuttle is dying. Move the shuttle and have three zealots. He doesn't have speed yet. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. He needs zealot speed. Oh, I think this battle will have a different outcome if the shuttle will have come from the upper side. Mm. Those guys will be dead. And I think he could he could have won this battle. Right, those three tanks. Yeah, he cannot throw a shuttle with three turrets at two bunkers if he, uh, from downside. Look at that! Just something that small could have really changed. Well, it's a really good timing attack. So that's round three, my friend. Three zero for our undefeated champion, Medino. Really, really well played. Really well read by Madinho.